Yo, guys, good morning. Let's get ready to get to work. How's everybody doing today? Let me grab the chat here, pop it out. Boom. Benny, what's up? Nice. Good stuff, man. Good luck on those swing trades. Let's let's uh, put out a quick tweet here, guys. Let everybody know we're live. I'm going to let everybody in the Discord know we're on as well. Today's watch list, SPY, MS, MSGM, HILS, and Tesla is what I have on the list for today. I'll be trading ES futures. Sorry guys, kid broke into the room here. Had to take a look at what she wanted to show me. Never miss a moment. Not if I can help it. All right, putting out a quick tweet here, letting, letting everybody know we're live. And a quick Facebook post. And we'll start going over this watch list. Like I said, SPY, MSGM, HILS, Tesla. Good morning, Dan, what's up, what's up? All right, so one more time, SPY, MSGM, HILS, and Tesla, ESF. All right, guys, so let's get to work here, SPY. On the SPY, let's hop on over real quick here to the daily chart. Yesterday, we talked about it, what, coming on down to 400. Yesterday, we talked about this in the pre-market. We talked about it coming down to 400 and testing that level. And that is, in fact, yesterday what we did. We came down here low on yesterday's 428 cents. $400.28 cents low on the SPY yesterday. Now, today here in pre-market, we did go a little bit lower. We are bouncing back here as overall economical data showing somewhat of strength and health in the economy, which what, guys, translates into what? A potential soft landing. Market's going to like that now. Anytime we get something that looks like we're probably going to have potential soft landing, then that's going to cause the market to bounce. We're starting to see a bounce today. So I'm going to be watching to see if we can bounce our way back towards 405. Back towards 405, right? Yesterday's high was 405.13. I wanna see if we can bounce ourselves back in there. I'm not looking for us to get back to 410 today or anything like that. I mean, is it possible? Yeah, it's, it's possible. But like yesterday, I didn't expect a big move, right? Yesterday I said, what? I'm expecting five points uh, in, in channel and in, in moves. And yesterday we went from 405.13 to 428, just about those five points. So today I'd expect something along the lines of the same type of move, okay? Uh, 400 support, 405 resistance. If we get uh, under back underneath 400, then that's when I think, you know, we could get a little bit weak and maybe sell off a little bit, okay? So keeping a close eye on that. Next is MSGM. This is a small cap that's making some moves this morning here in pre-market. You could see here, all right, this is a daily chart. With the way I have TC2000 set up here, these uh, daily candles will show you the pre-market action. So this is what this stock has done today in pre-market. It's up 184%, and we've gone from basically $4 upwards of over eight. Right here, you can see clear as day. Oh, let me switch on over to that TC2000. Right here, you can see clear as day. Resistance, resistance, Previous resistance, look at this, ready? More resistance at $8.54. 
That 850 zone is going to be and has been showing up as resistance in pre-market. If we break up and over that level, we could see a move that could take us up here to the next resistance zone near $11. Okay, so keeping a close eye on that. Bottom support would be around this red line here. You see this red line? That red line right there is a 200-day moving average. And I'd watch and see if those 640s can hold some support on pullbacks. Good morning, Mike. Next, HILS. HILS here this morning. Watching for the 125 area to see if it can hold some support. You can see here previous level of tremendous resistance and previous level of support back here. Okay, so if that level can hold some support, you could see pops back into 178 to two dollar area all right and then last but not least we have tesla tesla remember we talked about tesla yesterday what did we say 180s 181 182 resistance 170 support tesla yesterday 178.05 all the way down to 166.50 now today i'd watch for maybe a little bit deeper pullback possibly into 161 area and if 161 area can hold support, you could see some bounces here that could take it back up towards 170. All right, guys. Guys, do me a quick favor. Hit that like button for me. The bell has rung. The market is open and we got to get to work. Hit that like button and help me with the YouTube stream here. All right. Let's get connected back here. I will be trading the ES today. Watching 440 for possible support. I'll show you that here off the daily chart. Sorry, the 60 minute chart. Here is your 440 area. Previous resistance here recently, previous level of support here. Okay. Um, let me hop on over to the ES chart. Here you go. Previous resistance here at 40, 40, uh, 40, 40, 40, 41 area. Previous support back here. Okay. Previous structure back here. So I'm going to be watching that 40, 40 area if it wants to hold support. All right. If it does, then watch them for pops back up into. Right about 40, 50. I expect today to be a little bit choppier, day one of the FOMC meeting. And because it's day one of the FOMC meeting, it could get a little bit choppy. You know, we could see some volatility here early on in the morning. And then as we progress into deeper in the morning, getting closer to lunchtime, we'll probably end up starting to see things simmer down a little bit and maybe get choppy as we go into the rest of the day and into tomorrow. Then tomorrow morning, I expect it to be extremely lackluster, extremely quiet, eerily quiet even, until we have the conclusion of the FOMC meeting and we get the, the, the what do you call it? The, the reports that just start coming through, the articles on CNBC with all the news and you know the decision on the rate hike, which we already know. We already know. It's gonna be either 25 basis points or 50. Either way, that's not gonna move the market. What's going to be the key tomorrow is listening for what? The federal funds rate. Did they move it? Did it go up? If it did, then I think the market goes lower. I will be shorting the ES. All right. If they didn't and it stays the same, then I'll just be getting long the ES more than likely. All right. So that's my plan here for the day into tomorrow. Beast, are you out there? The beast. Got the coffee rolled in. Here you go. So good. So good. You know what? Let me check on 10 a.m. news stuff. Nothing at 10 a.m. Oh, yes, yes. We have Chicago PMI in 12 minutes. And in about 27 minutes, we have consumer confidence. All right. So we have those pieces of news coming out here pretty soon. Imagine Chicago PMI is at about 945. And then 15 minutes after that, we have consumer confidence. Typically, my trades start to happen around 940, 945, leading into 10 o'clock. I might have to sit on my hands or be quicker on my takes. Uh, because I don't want to be caught up in anything into 10 a.m. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's going on, guys? So how did everybody fare yesterday? And the day green like you saw, I didn't trade again. Just to trade in the morning and that was it for me.
Oh, guys, before I forget, today is the last day, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, let me let me double check this. Pretty sure today's the last day for this coupon code. So if you're interested in getting 60% off lifetime at the prop firm that I'm trading with, here's the coupon code in the link in the chat. Hey, small green's better than red. Good good stuff, Dan. Little push here off the off the opening bell on the spy on Tesla. Let me get you over to that spy chart. So quick little push here, slight little gap up, little push up, coming on back down. 402 is holding resistance so far. So 4045 area holding the ES up some here, guys. 402 zone on the spy, give or take. <laughs> Dan, I love this thing, man. It's so good. And and the way my wife makes it, it's so sweet because I have a sweet tooth. So it's more like a like a dessert coffee of anything. It's so good. And it's hot. Like it's really, really warm. So it's good. CNTX halted. That's some big volume there on CNTX. Over 6 million shares traded on that three minute candle, guys. I don't know why this thing's whipping around like this. <clears throat> it's right in front. I didn't draw these lines now. These lines have been drawn here since. <laughs> these lines have been drawn here, here since seems like November 28th um, 150 resistance area you have the 200 day moving average just underneath that level and then you have this previous resistance on the daily if that level gives way next zone would be 160s and then really nothing until like 180 175 to 180 so keep a close eye on that one there guys MSGM, not much here. Just hold it on to seven, pushing up over, over eight. Let's turn this into a three-minute chart again. There you go. Nice push. Good volume. Watch that 750 area where VWAP is at. See if it can hold support. HILS halted to the upside here as well at 150. So that one's halted there at 150. You have resistance, possible resistance up here around 170. And 160, a lot of potential resistance here recently. Well, not recently, but on the chart here, you can see all that previous resistance at 160. ES trying to hold 4036 right now. Nice, Dan. Dude, you could just buy the coffee maker on Amazon and make it at home. A couple YouTube videos and you're you're good to go. It's not even that expensive at all. Like you probably get one for like 40 something bucks. And you can have it all the time, my man. <laughs> all the time. Cuban coffee and trading. So we should name the series. 4036 being tested here thoroughly on the ES. You could see a little bounce there. I have five minutes to the next piece of news or next piece of data. In about five minutes, we're going to get Chicago PMI.
previous was 45.1, expected 45. We'll see what the actual comes in. I'd love to get long here with a stop just underneath 35, but five minutes before they drop these numbers, I can't. I can't do that to myself. That, that would be an irresponsible move. So I'll just sit here and watch, even if I have to watch until after 10. Oh, it's my parents' anniversary. Give me one second, guys. A right, little pop there, guys, off of that 35 zone again. Could have scalped a few points there, but really I'm not interested in, in that here right before the news. We got four minutes before the Chicago PMI drops. You guys watching anything specific, seeing anything on your side, on your side of things? Guys, do me a quick solid. We got 13 people watching the live stream here. We only got seven likes. Help me out here. Hit that like button. Really helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And thank you very much for tuning in today. Nice little pop here to 44. So that's, that's actually moving a little bit quicker than I would have expected. We still have four minutes before those numbers come out. As you can see, the SPY just super choppy, right? Buy super, super choppy right now. Yes, of course, as well. Got yourself a bit of a wedge pattern forming here. A little bit of a bullish pennant. Can't, I can't uh, I can't zoom out any more than that on this thing, but if we turn it into maybe a five minute chart. There you go, a little bit cleaner, I guess you could say. And two more minutes before those P that PMI number drops. <clears throat> Trying to break out of that bullish pennant right now. But with two minutes to those numbers, I'm not about to enter a position. All right, guys, we got one minute to those numbers. Let's see what happens. Let's see what kind of reaction we get. Coming back inside that wedge.
Coming right back inside that wedge here. We got a few seconds before those numbers come out. All right, those numbers should be out now. They're not printing yet here. But market definitely pulling back in some here. Right back to 36, 35 area we talked about. I held support earlier. If anybody's got a read on those numbers and want to post it, go ahead. And 36 holding support so far here. Not bad. Wanted to get long there in front of that 36 for a little bit too a little bit. I'd rather just wait now for the breakout to be honest. <clears throat> that that quick tap of 36 there did not last long. There we go. Damn it, man. Would have been a nice little scalp there to start. So PMI, the Chicago PMI came in actually just, just underneath expectation. Uh, forecast was 45, previous was 45.1. We came in at 44.3. Um, and we're still here inside this flag pattern on the ES. It's looking like it wants to go. Man, I'm, I really wish I wouldn't have missed that, that fill down there. Would have already scalped a few points right there, right out the gate. Put in a little bit of a doji here. A lot of indecision going on here. <clears throat> Next piece of news is in 14 minutes, we have consumer confidence. Previous was 108.3 expectation here forecasted at 109.0. We'll see what the actual comes in. Still got 14 minutes to that, more, more or less. This range is definitely scalpable. If you break over 46, I think you have to, you have to get over 50. But 50 could be a little bit of temporary resistance. Mike, it depends. Yesterday, it's funny. Yesterday, we went over one of those lessons. It depends on the setup I'm doing. It could be anywhere from two to five. What It depends on the setup I'm trading. If I'm trading, if I'm trading the ES, it could be anywhere from two to five. If I'm trading the micros, it could be upwards of 30 or 40 contracts. Just depends what I'm trading, but, it, but it's, it's specifically, it's going to be a, a dependent on the pattern or setup, right? That I'm trading. If I'm trading something that's not something that's uh, normal, like that I would trade normally, like a reversal, like last week on Thursday. I decrease size. If it's a breakout, like last week Friday, I decrease size. If it's a pullback like yesterday, and I'm going long the pullback, then uh, more inclined to be in there full size. I still typically tend to scale in as well. Well, here we are breaking outside of this flag, guys.
that forty eight fifty zone is gonna be is gonna be tough. I I think I can get through it. It's just gonna it's gonna it's not gonna be easy. There you go, right to fifty. Man, I'm so upset I didn't get I didn't get a fill down there. That could have been the one clean setup. <clears throat> all right guys i'm gonna sit here and wait we got 10 minutes to the next piece of news drops the next numbers the consumer confidence report we'll see what that looks like meanwhile Let's we'll go take a quick look at MSGM. Not much going on there. CNTX came all the way back down. HILS holding up fairly well here, guys. Keep eyes on HILS. That's holding up really well. Remember that 125 line we drew in pre-market? Look how well it held support there. So definitely keep eyes on this one. This one has potential. 150 area for potential support here. You got the 23.6 Fibonacci level. You have VWAP and you have the previous halt level lining up there. This is a setup long here that I like to take with a stop just underneath that 150 zone. Keep an eye on that. We got eight minutes to these numbers come out here. This consumer confidence report we're pulling back in here now to 40 on the es forty level would be a level i'd watch for potential support looking at that sixty minute chart that's that line we drew earlier let me show you Here's that line we drew earlier at 40, at 40 level. That's 41.25 there. So that's 40 level here. You got previous support here before this big bounce. You have previous resistance here from earlier. So keeping a close eye on that. HILS trying to get that bounce off of VWAP as well. So both. Starting to line up here with some decent setups. HILS, HILS Hills. That's a very nice setup that's starting to formulate there. And the ES trying to hold that 40 level. That 40 level is key. We got seven minutes to uh, consumer confidence numbers coming out. If that 40 can hold the consumer confidence numbers come out and they're confident. We could see a pop here that should take us through 50 on the ES. And if it does, I think we got clear room here towards, towards 60. I think we really do. If you're newer to trading, guys, something that I always say, if you're newer to trading futures and you're out there just trading like one ES, you're better off, in my opinion, trading the micros. Just get yourself 10 micros. If you're comfortable with the risk of one ES being $50 per point deviation, then you're going to be fine with 10 micros. It's the same $50 risk per point. It's the same $50. And it'll allow you to scale into and scale out of your trades. Got six minutes here to these numbers coming out. 40 trying to hold support. Yeah, 
HILS testing VWAP again in those 150s. If it breaks under 150, then maybe the 90 MA catches support. If not, then, then you know that one might start to lose some hype. The good thing that it has going for it right now is that this pullback is on light volume. Exactly what you want to see on that pullback. Same going on here, more or less, for the ES. Hop on over here to the three minute chart. Let's get rid of this. Why does this keep happening? Let's get rid of these lines real quick. At five minutes to the numbers, there you're getting a pop off of 42. Nice push here, guys, off of that 42, 40 area. But we are, I want you to notice this. You guys, let's go back to Thursday of last week. Remember that nice move we got Thursday of last week? And then Friday, another nice move. Two big days back to back. And then yesterday, we saw our first day of like choppier, smaller moves, right? We saw that. And now today, again, the same. You know, you're starting to see things slow down. Why? Because this is always, this is notorious to happen right before uh, the conclusion of a Fed meeting. Today's day one of the Fed meeting. And tomorrow we have the conclusion and we'll get our, our rate hike decision. And more importantly, our federal funds rate decision, whether they leave it alone where it's at or they change it again. Last time they changed it, they upped it. What happened? Market imploded on itself again. So I'd expect something similar. If they change it and move up the goalpost again, move it up some, then I would imagine we would probably see the SPY dump back down to 380s over the coming days, dependent on what? Earnings after the bell Thursday from Apple, Alphabet, and what was the other one? Amazon and Amazon. All right. So it's all going to be dependent on that. So this is notorious. I remember years ago uh, on days like today, specifically during these Fed meetings, oh my God, I would get chopped up into oblivion. I would get chopped up into because I, I couldn't understand. This is years ago now. I couldn't understand why we weren't getting direction. You know, why we were getting these choppy, just slower, smaller moves. It's because everyone's just sitting on their hands waiting for tomorrow. Today might be a, I haven't had a no trade day in a while. Today might be a no trade day. It might be. Tomorrow could possibly be a no trade morning. It could be. And that's perfectly fine. You got to be willing to have those days where you don't trade because you know what? Not taking a trade is better than getting chopped up, right? Like I already have curved my expectations today. I don't expect you know, some 40 Five point move, 50 point move. I don't expect that. Therefore, I'm not looking to make, you know, 12, 15, 18, 20 points on a, on a, on a trade, on a final take profit. I'm not looking for that. Can it happen? Anything can happen, dude. But is it high? Is there a high likelihood of that happening? In my opinion, no. Therefore, if I do enter a trade, I already know on the first move, I'm probably going to take off more profit than normal to protect we're starting to pull back here away from 40 50 zone that we talked about we have a few seconds for these numbers to come out A deeper pullback here, guys, coming back down here into 3950 zone. Remember that 35 level is the level that you'd want to see hold support. If we get underneath that level and things start to look bearish, we could drop pretty easily under 30.
Yeah, tomorrow afternoon and definitely into Thursday and Friday, we should get direction. We should get direction. All right, 10 o'clock consumer confidence numbers should be posting here. I don't have anything else coming out after this. So anything else coming out after this will be a surprise. Guys, HILS, watch that one. Remember, we talked about this level under 150 holding support, previous halt price, VWAP 23.6 FIB. If you got long this thing in here, first take profit zone, in my opinion, is up here in front of the high day, just in case you double top. That's the first take profit zone. Okay, so consumer confidence actually came in weaker. So we were forecasted at 109. Previous was 109. We came in at 107.1. That is definitely weaker. That takes away this long bias that I had now. Now I'm not too certain here on direction. We're holding up a little bit for now. If we do break... 30 i think we i think we easily get underneath 30 like sorry if we do break 35 i think we easily get underneath 30 here pretty soon let's go take a quick look at the daily chart here this is on hills this is tough resistance up here at at 75 area I would take profits up there through the high into 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 75 through 80. And then I'd hold on to some looking for the push into two and take profits up there. Okay, there you go, guys. Hills hitting the first profit target zone. Next profit target zone would be through those highs onto on the way to 80. You're starting to get an increase in volume here on this push upwards. That's exactly what you want to see. But you want to start to see if you want to break this high and, and have confidence on extension, you're going to need a volume bar that looks like this. You're going to need a volume bar that looks like that. If you get a volume bar like that through the highs, I think this thing easily gets over to. So far, ES and SPY struggling here, not doing much of anything. All right, you got new highs on hills here into 180, right? So that was that first take zone. It's been reached. Let's see if you can get up there towards two. The volume bar on the breakout of the high of day wasn't as big as I said it needed to be. So I'm, I'm not too confident here that you get through two right now. You're going to need bigger volume than that. So far, guys, just chopping around here on the ES. Like if you're a scalper and you're just in there to scalp a few points on a 2000 tick chart, then yeah, you know, you've had a real nice range there to scalp on something like that. But for me, in the setups I trade, it's just not there right now. Guys, watch hills. I think it's definitely looking squeezy. Watch if you get that 9 AMA VWAP cross to the upside. At that point, I'd hold my stop on the remainder against that 9 AMA. <clears throat> my risk per trade, it's generally, I generally try to risk about $300 per trade. So I generally try to make, you know, Put myself, let me let me rephrase that. No, no, no. Percentage is irrelevant. 
It's a dollar amount. A dollar amount risk per trade. You want to pick a dollar. Let me put it to you this way, guys. You want to pick a dollar amount risk per trade that makes it feel like you're still in a simulator. If you put on a risk per trade that makes you uneasy, that makes you nervous, that gives you the emotion of anger or loss at the end of the trade because you were wrong and you got stopped out, you have too much risk on the trade. You need to pick a dollar amount that is basically equivalent to how you felt when you were in a trade in a simulator. And if you traded a simulator and you didn't have any emotions attached to the trades in the simulator, then you were trading it like a video game and not a profession. When you go to when you're in school when, or when you were in school and you took a test, there were some emotions there, right? You didn't want to get a bad grade. If you're trading in a simulator, it's the same thing. You should have emotions attached to it because when you're wrong, you got a bad grade. You want to do good, right? If you want to do good, then you need then you need to care. And caring about your performance in a simulator should have emotions involved in it. Because while you're not losing money, you're losing time if you're not taking serious, right? So you're disrespecting your time. Time is money. So therefore, you are losing money because you could have been spending that time making money elsewhere. All right. So then you want to transition from the simulator into your live account. And I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the cameras. I'm talking to you. I'm looking at my chart. You want to transition from the simulator into your live account. And then your dollar amount risk per trade needs to be the same emotional level. Okay. Meaning it should not cause you emotions to lose, but you need to take it serious. That could be 20 bucks. It could be 50 bucks. It could be a hundred bucks. It could be a thousand, right? Because maybe you're loaded. Maybe you, you, somebody watching the stream, you know, you got net worth of 20, 40, 50 million dollars. Losing a thousand bucks ain't a big deal to you. You could, you could literally have a thousand dollar risk per trade. You know what I'm saying? So we're still trading in this range here. Nice little range. I mean, it's scalpable. Not something that I want to really trade in though. So yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to pick that dollar amount and you want to stick with that dollar amount on every trade. You know, like yesterday, for example, my risk was, it was, a, it was about 300 bucks. Okay. A little bit more, a little bit less, probably a little bit more, but it was in that $300 range. Right. I had three contracts. My first take, my first take, my first two takes put me at $600 up on the day. I had already doubled my risk to reward. Right. That final take would have been $1,200 had I gotten it on the day, right? Meaning I, have, I would have quadrupled my risk to reward, right? I was risking, let's say 300 bucks, made 1,200. I didn't make it up there. And on that last contract, I lost a little bit. I wound up being up, I don't remember what it was, 450 bucks, 475 on the day. <coughs> Right. But that's what you want to do. You want to pick a dollar amount that if you lost. Right there, and then you want to make sure. Right. That it's to the point where you're like, it doesn't matter. I can make it back. Tr your trading will exponentially change the moment you realize that your losses mean nothing because you know that your your strategy, the way you trade, your discipline works that you make it back. That you can easily make it back. Not revenge trading mentality, but that you know that just that one loss will be erased with your next winner because your risk to reward ratios are dialed in and you're trading only the setups that you know give you an edge. And when you're right, they pay you well enough that it will erase that. There's been times where I don't know if you're on the live stream on YouTube, but when I was doing it on the Discord with the DTC and whatnot, I'd take three trades in a day, right? It was just a three trade day. My first two trades were red, be red on the day. And I would take my third trade, oftentimes in the afternoon because it would be in the afternoon session. It wasn't, I wasn't trading futures, I was trading stocks or options. Obviously, I was trading equities. That third trade of the day, would erase the two losses from the morning and leave me profit. That's what happens when you have that risk to reward dialed in. 
<sighs> all right, guys, we're coming all see the chop that I'm talking about. We're coming all the way back down here to 35. Really not looking. For, I'm not. You know how like when you get to like some place you want to go to, like for me, for example, getting to like the to to the ocean on the boat or on the beach, and I just want to dive into it. I want to I want to get into the fun. So you're like you get there, boom, 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 and like you unload all the stuff, and you're like, all right, let's go. I'm not feeling like that right now with these trades. Yesterday, what was it? I took my first trade like at 9:45 a.m. It's 10 10 a.m. I still haven't taken a trade. Just not feeling it here. Honestly, I'm not feeling it here at all. Guys, Hills pulling back to VWAP here. Once again, low volume pullback. You that's that's fine. You want to see the low volume pullbacks, but this level has to hold support. If it doesn't, then you might get choppy. You might come all the way back down here to like 140s, and then right before lunch, you get maybe a squeeze if it holds. Guys, remember, when you have proper risk reward, you could literally be wrong over 50% of the time and still make money, still be a profitable trader. What I don't like about that type of statistic is that being wrong so often will mess with your confidence. It'll mess with your mind, the mental game. I typically have about a 60 something percent and i mean in the overall there have been times where i'm in the 70s and i'm like yeah let's go <laughs> you know but typically overall i'm in somewhere in the 60s and like the middle to to higher 60s and i feel better there i feel better there because you it's forget about it man it's easier on the mind when you're right more often than you're not but you could literally be wrong more often than you're right and still be a profitable trader as long as you stick to proper risk reward parameters i mean that example i just showed you was exactly that three trades on the day two red but with proper risk parameters that third one could easily bring you back without revenge trading we're talking about keeping the the exact same risk per trade it's not like oh you risk 300 bucks in the first one oh you risk 300 bucks in the second one oh now i'm gonna risk 600 oh you don't have to if the setup is there and it's right you risk 300 again you're right and you're right and it, it gives you the extension you should make about 900 bucks meaning it's going to erase these 600 plus leave you profit on the day <sighs> Guys, this is like watching paint dry right now. It's 10.13 a.m. I feel like we get choppier. And I think we are getting choppier, <laughs> as a matter of fact. I think we are getting choppier. Look how choppy. Guys, this is what the spy has done this morning. Look. Let me put it in a little square for you. That's what the spy has done this morning, right there. That's the spy. New high, new low, new high, back to the lows. Punch back up in front of the highs. Make a new low of the day. Get right back up here to 402. That is the definition of chop, guys. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to fall into the trap of, oh, I'm on a stream. I got to put a trade on. Dude, I'll, I'll cut it right here. I will not put on a trade in this chop. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Something I have to stay awake with this ES the way it's going. I would say, guys, I'm going to go into a lesson. But honestly, we've been doing nothing but lessons the whole last 45 minutes.
unplanned unplanned lessons but lessons nonetheless Rustar, good morning, man. No trades for me. No trades. I told the gang here this morning early on. I was like, guys, I'm gonna, I'm here to trade. But until we don't get out of the chop, I'm not interested in a trade. Sorry to hear that, man, for you. I hope, I hope uh, it's not too deep. You can dig yourself out next uh, tomorrow or later on. Just wait for your setup. Wait for your setup. <clears throat> here you go guys my trading screen here no trades not, not in anything just, just watching, watching and waiting this is this is actually pretty bullish here we made that fresh low and then you know six minutes later we got right back up here to the highs Possibly about to break them. What's Tesla been looking like this morning? Well, not as bad as, as the spy, that's for sure. Not as bad as the spy. But pretty range bound for sure. Half a tank of gas. There you go, man. By making that fresh high there, just about testing that high level, coming on back down a little bit. Looks like I made a new high by a few pennies. All right, guys, still not in anything. 10, 17 a.m. Definitely a much slower day today. Yeah, it you know, it's day one. It's day one of the FOMC meeting. So typically, that's how, that's how it is. And tomorrow, typically, the morning session is a lot like this. Um... Followed by afternoon direction after the Fed meeting is over. I mean, if we can break and hold 50, I think there could be a trade to be had there. Honestly, if it would have been earlier on, I would have been more inclined and more excited to take that trade. If I do take the trade, even if it's on a pullback on one of my good setups, I'll probably decrease size just to just be careful because I'm not, I'm not confident in the price action. That's what it is. That's all it's coming down to for me right now. I'm not confident in the price action. And I'm not a machine gunner trader. You know, I'm not out here trying to grab uh, every little setup, every little move, every little tick. I, I like to wait for the setups that I'm confident in so I can dig into them and, and just take my trade. You know, something with high, high likelihood. How wild, you could barely see that doji there on the stream, but there's a doji right there. <laughs> you could barely see it. But right back into those 50s there. It's looking like it wants to break up and over them. I'm not going to buy the breakout. If anything, I'll watch and wait for a pullback into 50, see if it holds. But right now, just sitting on my hands. Yeah, well, it will be better after tomorrow's Fed meeting. So after tomorrow's Fed meeting and we get our rate hike decision and more importantly, uh, our federal funds rate confirmation, whether they're going to stay the same or change, um, I think that's when we get direction. And then Thursday, we have uh, 
earnings from Amazon, Apple, and Alphabet, um, we're, we're going to start to get direction. And I think that direction can be uh, held for a few days, meaning I think we, we will continue. Whatever direction the market's going to pick, we should be able to get continuation from that for a little bit. And that's going to give us a better trading environment, you know, cleaner volatility, if you will, because this is not this is not a volatile session by any means. I mean, we've been stuck in like a 15 point range for almost an hour. And for 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 channel traders, you've definitely had a field day here. I tried to take one trade off of 35 and didn't, wasn't able to get it. And then we started to get our numbers out on confidence, consumer confidence and Chicago PMI. And I just sat back and it's looking like I'm just going to sit back, to be honest, because look, you, you could theoretically get short here at, at the top end of this channel in front of 50, stop over 50 and see if you got to drop back into 40 to the low to the mid 30s. You probably get it, but it's not my style. And, and I, it's just not, you know, you got to trade where you know you have an edge. In other words, you got to stick to what you know for the most part, right? There's not there's nothing wrong in trading outside of that and learning new stuff. Um, you know, things for me that are outside of my go-tos are reversal patterns and breakouts. I take them. But these channel plays, I tend not to take them cuz they can get so choppy. Then get wildly choppy. Guys, you know what? This is perfect time for if you have any trading questions, just put them up there in chat, man. If you want to ask anything, you know, hey, Jesse, how do you trade a bull flag properly? Whatever. Just ask away. Throw that question up there. You're getting a lot of selling here in front of 50, but it looks like it wants to break. So anybody's guess. Volume is slowing down, though, in front of 50. You're going to want to see bigger volume. There you go. You want to see that volume start to increase. So if you want to throw up any questions in chat, guys, now would be a great time. Not in anything, not looking to take a trade right now, waiting for a setup that I like in order to take a trade. Um, I mean, you know, remember I trade patterns and setups, right? Right now, there's really not a setup here. Um, yesterday, you, I think somebody, I don't know if it was you, Dan, or somebody else asked me what was my favorite pattern. And so far, lately, as of late, you know, the, the bear flag has been my, my favorite pattern. Um, as far as setups go, it's very simple. Very, very simple for me. My favorite setups are when you got a breakout and you got to pull back into support. I like to get long in front of that support and then wait for the bounce, right? I like to buy that support zone. I like to buy into that support zone looking for that U shape. Kind of like we did yesterday. I, I wish I would have taken a screenshot of that chart, but I didn't. And then on the short side of things, right? On the long side, I like to buy. I like to buy support confirmation bounces, let's call it. On the short side of things, I like to short into weak bounces. So let's say you have something like a stock that gapped down. You know what's a perfect example of this? Tesla, yes. This is perfect. You have this big sell off on Tesla, right? Boom. And then you get a bounce back into this VWAP area, 174 zone. But the bounce back to this level here of resistance, look how small that volume is on that bounce back attempt. Okay, look at the volume on the sell-off. That's the volume on the sell-off. This is the volume on the bounce back. Let's move these boxes. Oh, no, I can't move them up there. 
All right, whatever. They're, you know what? We're just going to make them thicker. We're going to make the, the line thicker so you can see it better. Boom. Boom. You see how much bigger the volume on the sell-off is compared to the volume on the bounce back? What is that telling you? Okay, this is one of my favorite short setups. That's telling you there's not a lot of buyers taking place down there. It's not like there's this frantic buying and like, oh my God, it's such a great discount on the day. I want to buy this here. It's not what it's telling you. In fact, it's telling you the opposite because the sell-off had this gargantuan vol volume compared to the, to the bounce back. It's telling you, hey, there's a lot of selling pressure here. There's barely any buying pressure here. So I like to get short on those types of moves. Where's my, here we go. And look what happened. We came all the way back down to the low by the end of the day and broke underneath that low to close the day off. So if you would have gotten a short up here, 172, 172.50, you would have been able to ride this down here in front of the low of day, cover some 168 and change, cover some more before the bell or even after the close down here in the 166 and change area. So that's one of my favorite setups. Oh, I want you to notice again how the volume got bigger. How the volume got bigger when we sold off again. This is the type of stuff, guys, that I go over in the courses. So if you're interested in that, it's the one time you got a link today. Boom. There it is. And if you're newer and you want a free course, or you want to start learning some of the basic stuff, there you go, bang. So yeah, that's that's a favorite setup. I'm typically more of a long bias trader than I am a short bias trader. However, over the last year, I've been shorting more than ever before because well, we've been in a bear market. So I've been shorting more. And when I say shorting, it includes buying puts. Buying, getting long puts is the equivalent of taking advantage on a stock to the short side. All right, let's, let's go take, take a quick look here at the equities charts. MSGM, guys, look, this is exactly what we talked about on MSGM. Watch for that break of the, of the VWAP. Now you're getting a nice little move here to the upside. You're getting yourself little bit of a bullish pennant again. You got a 90 MA VWAP cross to the upside. All right. Fib levels, yeah, about eight bucks, but nothing nothing huge if you want to hold to this 90 MA, which is what I would like to see hold support here on, on that one. Hills couldn't hold, couldn't hold. It kind of double top. Remember, what did we say about the 180 area? Do you guys remember? Look at that line. We drew this line in pre-market. We drew this line right here into the 180 zone in pre-market and it's held resistance so far this morning. And we're back down here towards the stop zone. So first take profit met. Remember what I said today and I said it yesterday on the first moves, I'd be more inclined to take more profits off than normal just in case because you're getting a lot of one and done moves and we're getting these across the board. We're getting these across the board. CNTX, one and done -er. You know this line we drew? We drew this line here uh, a while back, a long time ago, right? There it is. This line was drawn back in December. And there it is, holding support. I, I like to leave sometimes these lines up there because they come into play later on. Other than that, not much else going on. Not much else going on there. You're starting to get a little breakout here on the ES. You're trying to get a little breakout here on the ES and on the SPY. 10.30 a.m. rolling around here, a few seconds to 10.30. And you're finally starting to get a little break of that 40.50 zone. Look, pretty good volume. Pretty, pretty good volume. You're finally breaking to the top end of this channel. If 40.50 can hold support, you know, you could have room here towards 40.60.
I'll watch and see if 4050 pulls back and we hold that general area of 4048 to 4050 zone. Maybe I'll consider getting long there. Like I said, I'm, this price action on the day doesn't have me itching to get into a trade. We'll see what happens here. Guys, any questions, throw them up in chat. Gonna wait a few more minutes, see if see if we got a clean setup. If not, I might call it a day a little bit early for me today. But if you guys have questions and we start getting into discussions, I'll stay here as long as we need to. Yo, the beast, you're out, bro. I don't blame you, man. It's like 2.30 in the morning over there, isn't it? Have a good one, man. Exxon, it got through yesterday's highs and it really squeezed out there. Nice move. You know, honestly, I would look at this and, and be like, I wouldn't have any FOMO on it. There was only one potential decent setup here and it was right here. When we broke up through the VWAP, pulled in and held there at 111.50, that could have been a potential setup. I'd have to look at the daily, see if there's any levels that line up there to give me confidence on that pullback. But that is quite the move it's given. Joseph, hey boss, glad to be here. Uh, more of a large cap than small cap guy, but I can tell you another stuff. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Um, I trade it all. I trade it all. I trade small caps, large caps, uh, options, and primarily futures. Primarily futures. But I trade it all because once you learn how to trade patterns and setups, you can use the same patterns and setup across the board. One thing that I'll always say, and it's the reality of the truth right here. Like this is real stuff. A lot of people won't tell you this on YouTube is that where do you think, what do you guys think patterns and setups are going to be, in other words, technical analysis is going to be more respected in the small cap world, meaning trading an actual small cap or in the large cap world in the futures in you know, in that world, where do you, it's going to be over here, large caps, futures, etc. Why? Because the professionals are trading. You're not going to catch professionals trading this stuff over here. You know, you're not going to catch the the, the, the freaking big prop firms, the big hedge funds. You're not going to catch these guys trading for the most part, you know, the smallies. 
So you're going to see a lot less emotions going on over here than over here. Um, and that's why I too prefer to trade large caps and stuff like that. Yeah, Joseph, uh, really simple, man. Um, I'm not sure if you've, I feel like I've seen your name around here before, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm hoping that my answer here, if you're not a subscriber, gets me a subscribe from you here on the channel, because I think you're going to like this, because you seem to clearly know as well what you're doing out there uh, to some degree or another. And here's my analysis. It's an extremely simple analysis. The rate hike is irrelevant. Throw it out the window. Who cares? 25 basis point, 50 basis point, it does not matter. Why? Because right now we have certainty on what the federal funds rate is, meaning we know when the pause should come, okay? However, if tomorrow they raise the federal funds rate to let's say 5.35, another quarter basis point, then the market's gonna be like, what the hell, man? What's happening out here? You guys, we knew when we were gonna pause. Now, when are you gonna pause? Does anybody know when they're going to pause? Going to, the market's going to freak, all right? It's not going to like that knee-jerk reaction to the downside. But then we have, like you mentioned, earnings on Thursday. We got Alphabet, we have Amazon, and we have Apple, right? These guys are humongous. If they crap the bed on earnings, or more importantly, if they are looking like super weak forward guidance, Extension move to the downside, we get down to 380, 385 on the spy. If they move the federal funds rate up, okay, and those earnings and the forward guidance are good, we kind of stick 390 and then we bounce back into probably possibly, possibly through uh, 405, 410. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. All right. If you get a mixed bag of earnings and forward guidance and you get uh, no change in the federal funds rate, I think we still push higher. If those earnings and forward guidance are really good and you get a pause, well, not a pause, and you get no change in the federal funds rate, 420. 415, 420. So I think that's it. I don't think I missed anything. Those are my thoughts. So good earnings, good forward guidance, no change in federal funds rate, we go higher. No change in federal funds rate, mixed bag earnings and forward guidance, we go higher. Not as high. Federal funds rate goes up, we go lower. If the earnings are pretty good, we don't go that much lower. We might even get a nice little bounce on Friday. If the earnings are in the crapper or more more likely right than the earnings being in the crapper we get uh weak forward guidance and we get that federal funds rate to stay what, what, what was that to stay the same right then we probably just chop around a lot maybe a little push higher but not much so yeah it's all going to be based off of that if no change in the federal funds rate then we either go lower or higher based off of forward guidance from those three names 10.38 a.m., guys, and <laughs> we're not getting much. We're not getting much out of anything right now. Super chop. Guys, remember, I stream Monday through Friday, 9, 15 a.m., until roughly 11 a.m., sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. If we get into good conversations, we've been here well past 11. Usually my trades happen between 9.45 to 10, 10.30. It's rare that I'm in a trade at 11 o'clock. It happens, but it's rare. All right, guys. Any questions you have here for me as we pull back into 402 on the spy that 402 20s area 4225 can hold support on the spy you could see a little bit more continuation move but man what a chop fest it's been
Guys, don't forget, last day to save with that prop firm I've been trading with. You get 90-10 split, meaning you keep 90% of your profits if you go with one of the regular accounts and 60% off lifetime of the account. One cool thing that I took advantage of that they have, you know how when you get funded, you're trading in their account, you have to pay a monthly fee for your data or whatnot, right? It was about $88 and change plus whatever credit card fees they charged. Came out to a little bit over 90 something dollars a month. Well, they came out with a one-time one -time fee, 250 bucks, and you're done. Well, tremendous savings. Unless you blow up your funded account right away, which you really shouldn't if you're trading it carefully and you trading it properly, you shouldn't blow it up. Oh, links there. This is the last day to save the 60% off. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more minutes here, guys. If we don't start to get a real clean, nice setup, I'm going to call it a morning for myself. Dan, so no. Okay, so the way, once you get funded with them, the only way you blow up is the same way you would blow up your evaluation account, meaning your trailing, your trailing drawdown was met, right? So if you have the $50,000 account, your trailing drawdown is 2,500 bucks, okay? That would be your trailing drawdown. However, once you've surpassed $2,500, right? Let's say 50,000, right? So 50,200, uh, sorry, 50,000, 2,000, 50, my God. $52,250 is reached on your account. Well, now, if you get down to $50,000, you blew up. Let's say you're at $60,000, right? You're at $60,000 now. Well, you'd have to come all the way down to $50,000 to blow up. You're at $70,000 now in that account. You've grown it, right? You've gone from fifty dollars to $70,000 in that account. All the way down to fifty. dollars now you blew up. You started it at 50, day one, you blew 2,500 bucks, day one, you blew up, you know? And you don't owe them that 2,500 bucks. You don't owe them that. <clears throat> Joseph, what is the hold for? Is it a swing trade? Um, is it a long-term investment that you plan to hold for the next 10 years, 20 years? What is that hold? And then I can go look at it and give you my opinion on it. <laughs> chop, chop, chop. Yes. Swing trade. All right. Let's hop on over to that chart real quick. Oh, I was already there. <clears throat> Let's move over to a daily chart. There are a clear level of potential resistance or support right here at 110. You can see how it was tremendous level of support for a while. We broke underneath it, turned into resistance, broke up over it. It became short support here for a little while, very short amount of time, but it, came, it became support. Again, underneath it. Back up over it. Every time we've been under it, it's been resistance over it. It's been generally a support area. Right now, we're just over it. If it were me, I don't know where your entry is. Doesn't matter. If it were me, I would probably hold that line from here on out as my stop loss area. If it were me. Can we get back to 120 anytime soon? I mean, I think the very first thing is we got to break up over this level right here which is your gap entry of 
in order to even consider getting up here into in front of 120. So yeah, that's what I would do if it were me. <clears throat> yeah, man, super choppy, Dan. I think I'm going to start calling it a day for myself, guys. Unless anybody has any any other... Oh, you said you had another chart. Uh, my bad. What was it? You said Baba and MCHI. Looks identical to Baba. Identical. Good Lord. I know it's a China index fund. Wow. You have a clear potential resistance level here in front of 55, previously resistance there. And then it turned into support at various places. Whoops. So that would be a, a resistance zone if we get up in there, I would imagine. As far as support, I personally wouldn't hold it underneath that 5275 area. Basically, basically those mid 52s, I wouldn't hold it past that. Because I think if you break underneath 50, those mid 52s, I think it's a straight shot back down here to 50, 50, which if it breaks underneath that does get you into this gap that draws you down to 49, mid 49s here, 49.60s, 49.50s, which... If we draw a line across that level, it's going to coincide with all this previous resistance right in there, right? And this 50-day moving average, which is this blue line here on my daily chart. I wouldn't want to hold for that huge pullback when I could just cut it up here, book some, some profits, and then if anything, wait for that pullback into the zone if I think we're going to get a bounce. In other words, if I think we're going to do, we're going to do that, and then bounce off that area. So there you go. That's what I would be looking at. Oh, it's not erasing. Why not? Erase. Guess I'll have to do it manually. Later, Mike. Have a good one, bud. All right, guys, this choppy move is continuing to move here on the ES to the upside. Super, super choppy. Um, I'll tell you what. If you guys want me to leave, check this out. For a little while longer here, for at least another 15 minutes or so. If you guys want me to leave that chart, or sorry, that scene up there with the scanners in the chart, uh, let me know and I'll leave it up for like another 10, 15 minutes here for you. And uh, just type the number one there. Dad knows the drill. Type the number one in chat. Let me know if you want this screen to stay up here for you for a little while longer, uh, leading into 11 o'clock or so. And I'll leave it up there for you. Um, if not, I'll just cut the stream here and we'll reconvene tomorrow morning again. So if you want that scene, let me know. Type the number one in chat and I will put it up there for you guys for a little while. Fanny, you too. Joseph, my pleasure. Totally my pleasure. You too, brother. It's what we do every day, guys. Good stream today, guys. I love it, man. I love talking with you guys, especially on these slower days where I couldn't catch a good trade. And, you know, it's a great learning opportunity. It's a great learning opportunity. You know, it's a great time to ask questions. Because when we're all in the middle of trades, we ain't going to ask questions. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, yeah, I'll go over a random lesson while I'm in a trade because we're going over. The reason why I'm in a trade, right? But other than that, when it's slow like this. So type the number one in chat, guys, if you want me to put up that other screen. And I will. And I'll let it run for like a, a few, you know, 10, 15 minutes here leading into 11 o'clock. And then I'll cut off the stream. And tomorrow we'll reconvene at 9.15 a.m. And see what tomorrow's chop's going to be like. Because I think it's going to be choppy tomorrow leading into the conclusion of the Fed meeting.
All right, guys, you got that push there towards in front of 60. Um, I expect that 60 level to probably hold up a little bit of resistance. Dan, no one's trying to help you, man, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to leave that screen up for you for a little while, okay? Have a good one, guys. Peace.